Okay, this is a nice breezy Caribbean day. Woohoo! This is the island of Saba. Not very often visited by boats because it doesn't have a very good harbor. But there's a couple of places you can anchor just off the shore here and apparently get ashore. It's a very forbidding looking island, so much so that when Columbus was here, he didn't even bother to stop. But we are, we're going to get out and find out what's up on Saba. Our voyage begins in the very protected anchorage of Simpson's Bay Lagoon on the half Dutch, half French island of St. Martin. From the mast top where I'm doing a rigging check before the passage, I can almost see the small island of Saba, our next Caribbean destination to the southwest. We arrived in the Caribbean in December, following a 2,600 mile voyage from Canada, down the US East Coast, and then a tough offshore passage to Antigua. For the next few months, we'll explore the Leeward Islands, leaving St. Martin and starting with a visit to Saba in the Netherlands Antilles. Well, this is uh, leaving the lagoon in Saint Martin. So uh, the French side have a little gate out through the harbor, and we go out into the ocean again, leaving the protection of the lagoon. From St. Martin, it's about a 30 nautical mile sail to Seba. We have been waiting for a few days to get the right conditions for visiting the island since Seba is a tall, steeply sided island with no naturally protected harbours. The only anchorages for visiting sailboats are exposed open roadsteads, so if you want to visit by boat, you need a forecast of easterly winds with little or no swell from the north. Then you can tuck in behind the island on the west side to be out of the constant trade winds. As you approach the island, be prepared for the wind speed to accelerate along the cliffs as it's doing now. But once you're behind the island in the anchorage in Wells and Ladder Bay, conditions will become more benign. The entire coastline surrounding the island of Seba is a marine park and moorings have been installed to protect the marine environment. Cheryl prepares to pick up the floating line with a boat hook while I maneuver the boat. It's a bit tricky with the gusts coming off the cliffs. It looks like a couple of other boats have taken advantage of the weather to visit Seba as well. The mooring consists of a huge concrete block on the bottom, some heavy chain and a thick line up to the yellow float. A pennant floats off that for us to tie to. Cheryl runs our own lines through the pennant loop to prevent chafing of the park's lines and the boat is secure. All right, well, this is what they did in the old days on this island. This was the way ashore. This is one of the best days, but it looks to me like a very dangerous procedure. Every time in the 1700s, if you wanted anything ashore, 1800s, even 1900s, this is how you had to come in. And you row in and time your waves and jump off and run the boat up the beach. And there's the steps right there. Oh, it's a great idea, except for the surfing in the beach part and getting smashed to pieces on the rock. 800 steps. Apparently, after you go up 800 steps after beaching your boat, you get all the way up to a town called The Bottom. So I'm not really quite sure about that naming idea. Okay, let's run it in. Okay. Okay. Okay, going. Watch the rock. We barely make it just carrying our camera. How did they do it with full loads? Before building the harbour at Fort Bay, they had to contend with surf on the beaches, making it difficult and dangerous to try to land cargo and passengers. Many days, the island would have been cut off. There's 800 steps. Whew, long way up. 800 steps. 800 steps. That's why Columbus didn't check in here. Just went right on to one of the other islands, didn't even grace this one with the name of a saint. It takes about half an hour to climb the ladder, and when we get to the top, we reach the bottom. The name of the largest settlement, which in Old Dutch was called De Bat, for the bowl, which it looks like with the surrounding hills. In the bottom, which is a very pretty little town, you'll find the government buildings, a 
prestigious school of medicine, many small guest homes, the local library and busy community center, and numerous churches.